Now we move to the sixth paper, will be presented by myself, and the time will be done by my Serbian co-chair. It's entitled Surface Machining Condition and Fatigue Life on Nickel-Based Superalloys in Cornell 718. Uh, it is me, and the co-authors is Professor Martinez Naola, Pedro Arrazola and Arancha Linaza, from both of us from the University of Navarra, and Seid Arrazola from the uh, University of Mondragon, in, also in the Basque Country, and Arancha Linaza belongs to ITP Aero, is a Spanish industry producing aero engines parts. Okay. The key thing is to determine which is the effect of machining on fatigue life of, of specimens and beyond that of real components. You know? And this project is situated, this work is situated within a European project. Its name is Enoval and it's studying the, the use of ultra high bypass. Bypass is amount of air passing by the propeller or the, the fan without coming into the compression or on, on the turbine. This is a bypass ratio, the amount of air passing through this way in comparison to this other. Um, the plan is to increase the size of this bypass or the, this fan. And we are going to study inconel parts are here, in our high temperature components after the combustion chambers they are made mostly in nickel-based superalloys, and they are critical parts. The discs are huge, and if they break, uh, the problem has, the plane has a huge problem. Okay, and we will conduct tests on fatigue, and the key thing uh, from CIT work, for our work, is early crack detection. Is up to now, we can detect a crack is close to a millimeter in size, but uh, probably it's too late to distinguish between different uh, machining conditions. Okay. We have done quite a number of tests. It's up to 115 or something like that. No? Uh, that's a wonderful thing for any statistic uh, analysis. Uh, okay, we are plenty of that. I, I saw you a little bit of them. There are, mm, all of them are, mm, down at the specimen, less down at the specimen is T. There are also broach at the specimen, but are not within this presentation. In three conditions, it's baseline machining is the standard industrial procedure for machining, for turning parts. And two other ones, surface condition number one and surface condition number two. They are more aggressive and they are done with worn tools and things like that, changing, cutting speed and feeding and things like that. Okay, we have some lives to get here. Uh, cutting speed is changing, wear of the tool is changing, so uh, the distorted ledger is, has different depths within the microstructure, it's in microns. Afterwards we can pin the the test piece or not, not, or yes, 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 no here, okay. There is different roughness at the surface in microns in this column, and we have some parameters about surface uh, residual stresses here, and as uh, Sergei explained uh, to us before, there are different uh, parameters in relation with the residual stresses, is the minimum residual stresses that takes place beneath the surface. We will come later to this. And the compressive residual area in this strange plot of depth versus stress. Okay. And we can estimate by elastoplastic estimation, which is the cyclic residual stress after cycling. No? We have an initial residual stress. We are pulling and pushing the sample. So uh, residual stress will change and will stabilize in another value. And the key feature for fatigue might be this cyclic residual stress. Okay. Temperature of the test, maximum stress during the test, and after the test, we have two things that we um, are 
take, take into care. What, where is the fracture location? Is on the middle third or at the upper third or the bottom third or so on? And how is the fracture? If it is initiated at a fish eye, not, or just sometimes about nearly one half of the, our experiments initiates in the test piece uh, like a fish eye. No? Okay. We can do some simple plots of what is the effect of pinning. pinning. And the stars are samples without pinning. And the round cir circles are those specimens that were pinned. And there is no trend, no? It's quite surprisingly pinning of this nickel-based superalloy, testing at this temperature, seems to have no effect on, on, on life, on total fatigue life. The same thing with temperature. Okay, the blue is 450 degrees centigrade, the red stars are for 550 degrees centigrade, is, uh, and you can see that low temperatures has longer life in this S versus N plot than hotter uh, test testing at higher temperatures. Well, it's quite, uh, you can expect that effect. The other is important thing is machining conditions. Baseline is the standard procedure of machining or of turning has a longer lives. If you modify the, these standard conditions for, for more aggressive uh, turning conditions, you get um, lower lives, blue, blue dot or blue symbols is surface condition number one, and green are for the surface condition, so sorry, two and green for the surface condition number one. And the colors are for the surface condition, and fish eyes are plotted with a round symbol. And you can see that uh, fish eyes are not connected with, this, with the turning conditions. No? There are green, red, blue fish eyes. Okay. Then go to a deeper analysis on all of that. What we want to do uh, at the bottom line is we want to split the effect of roughness, of surface roughness, the effect of residual stresses, and the effect of the distorted ledger under the turning condition under the surface, there are uh, distorted grains and damage below the surface that play a role. And what we want to know is what is the effect of the different uh, parameters, roughness, residual stresses, distorted layer, what is playing the role in fatigue life. Okay, then we start with a statistical analysis and we have some turning parameters. It's the cutting speed, the tool wear, the depth of the distorted layer is a consequence of both of them. Then we can short pin the sample at the surface or not. And we have a, a roughness value. We prefer the peak to valley roughness instead of the standard R sub A. We prefer R sub V. We think it's more relevant for fatigue. And at the residual stresses, already I explained at the surface, the minimum of the compressive area. No? And that estimated from the elastoplastic estimation. No? It is here. Uh, the sample is drilled by the University of Mondragon after a, a sticking a strain gauges and going drilling in a steps of 10 microns, we get this nice plot of the different stresses. No? I brought this sigma xx in this direction, is the testing direction. And this is for the baseline, is tensile, before short pinning, and after short pinning we introduce some compression. This is the stress, this is the depth of be below the surface of the talent sample. For the surface condition number one, we get something like that with a huge compressive area and, hi and high values of, of the, for the compression, about 1,400 of megapascals in compression. Uh, short pinning has nearly no effect. And quite the same for the other surface condition number two. We get this com compressive area and short pinning has little effect on, on that. 
and the different variables are surface stress, minimum stress, and the area of the curve are the parameters relevant for, for the residual stresses. Let's see. Plus the fatigue parameters, of course. We are testing at a given temperature, and it is playing a role, maximum stress in the cycle, and after fracture, we have where the fracture takes place, and a fish eye. I brought you to you this cross, this is a fracture of a test piece, of, it has a rectangular shape, and um, it nucleates here, and it's a nice ice fish just in the middle of the sample. Okay, sometimes the cracks start from the surface, but sometimes they start from the from the interior of the test piece. And this is the text rig facility for, this is the sample over here, and there is a pyrometer and a thermographic camera for early crack detection, but it's not the topic of today. Okay, okay we are modeling in two steps. What we want to know is the effect of this, this surface roughness, residual stresses, a distorted layer, no? And we are going in two steps. We start with the machining parameters, cutting speed, feed, tool wear, and is the sample short pinet or not. And then we, pro we will perform a statistical analysis to get these physical parameters. These are relevant for fatigue, and we want to split the effect of these. From these and from the testing conditions, temperature, maximum stress, frequency, we will go into life to get life in a second statistical step. No? Um, we will speak here about total life. We can do the same exercise for crack detection or crack initiation uh, for our system. We are able to detect cracks with something as 10 microns in size. It's very nice. Um, and fracture, oh sorry, and fish eye. Why fish ice? What is the reason for this weird initiation? Okay, then first step is from the machining conditions to parameters relevant for for a fatigue model. Okay, I order the um, the, the roughness. These are the parameters to be the physical parameters. Roughness, roughness is very, very well correlated. This is the discrimination coefficient at the adjusted discrimination coefficient. It, as a function of the wear of the tool, pinning or not pinning, <coughs> and cutting a speed. And the correlation is perfect. No? Roughness is straight. OK. Compressive area is quite well predicted from, from wear and cutting a speed. Minimum residual stress is, is well predicted by pinning, well, and cutting speed. Distorted layer, well, it's not so well predicted on well, pinning, and cutting speed. And the order of significance is like that, no? The statistical analysis say the most important parameter is the first one, no? Then the second one, and afterwards the third one. And there is no a fourth or fifth or whatever. They are not significant enough to increase the adjusted discrimination. They are, they don't. If you put 12, uh, if you fit an equation with 12 variables, you will get a very good discrimination, but not a very good adjusted discrimination. No? It doesn't worth to add any other thing without significant enough one and increasing uh, adjusted discrimination. Okay, two minutes. Uh, whoa. I have to rush. Okay, and it's very poorly predicted uh, surface residual stress and the cyclic one. And it's a catastrophic prediction for fish eye. What does it mean? It's, it's not related to tonin. Uh, fish eyes has other reason. We just can't explain a little bit of the fish eye, 18%. But the other 82% of his ISIS is out of control. Out of control means that defects in the casting procedures or whatever, no? It's, it's not, not connected to, to telling. You can do 
from there, we can go to life, no? And you get these wonderful equations. Uh, they are not perfect, of course. But if, mm, say life is a function first of a stress, then the residual stress on the surface, the cyclic residual stress, temperature, compressive area, and roughness is the last one to play a role. Okay, if we introduce fish ice as a variable, we have better correlation coefficient, or better discrimination coefficient. What does it mean is it's play a role, but we don't, we cannot predict before, do, it's for predictions, it's impossible. We don't know if, if it's going to be a fish eye or not. So it's playing a role, but we cannot use it for predictions. Okay, okay we, we can do the same with uh, another fittings, but let's move to the next one. These are the experimental lives versus those predicted by that, these fitting equation with these parameters, stress, residual stresses, temperature, roughness. And the prediction is rather good. This is are the predictions. If we duplicate or triplicate the experiment, we get different lives. Sometimes we do one, two, three, four, five testing under the same testing conditions. And we get obviously the same prediction. But the experiment does not have the same life. They have a scattering life. It's because of material heterogeneities or whatever. No? Okay, but the, anyway, the prediction is quite good. The conclusion is most important parameters maximum stress, surface condition play a role, uh, baseline is best behaving, uh, distorted layer is a good correlator, temperature is, is a problem, uh, shot pinning has no role, and the problem is if you harden the surface, uh, shot pinning has no effect. You, know, you, you don't modify the surface enough. It was a case where uh, surface condition one and two, no? We don't change the pattern of residual stresses. Okay, and the fish eyes is, is quite a tricky thing because it improves the model, no? But can be used, but can be modeled if you change the approach. If we imagine a uh, statistical approach and what is the probability of nucleation and works the, the mathematics and the statistics of the crack propagation, probably you will get even better life predictions. Thank you very much. <laughs>